Hi everyone, Port ISM. Welcome to the condensed video build of the Alpha Models 124 Porsche 992. So yes, another Alpha Models. Uh, this one's been calling at me for a long time to build it. I love this car. Uh, it's a very unusual Porsche. It's the back end on this. I like big fat squash bum on the back of it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. After finding the perfect color, the Aventuri in green and mixing it through ProScale, uh, I think I've got a winning color combination here. So as I say, this is a condensed build. You want to see the full three part, 30 minute part videos. There's three of them in total. They're over on my Patreon. Become a patron down below in the link. You get other but perks like early access and all the videos up to a month, the full build videos, a Friday weekly bench update, uh, access to the supporter chat, the off-air supporter group as well. Um, loads of perks, and you keep me making these videos. So there's a link down below for Patreon. Pick the applicable tier, and you can get access to all the full videos. But for now, let's crack on, and let's get started with the build. Right, so the Alpha Models Porsche 911 Carrera 992. This is a resin photo etch multimedia kit so most of the bodywork and parts are resin with some photo etch parts for detail parts and such and acetate for the windows so pretty vague instructions come with these so take those with a pinch of salt as you can see i've already gone through and checked off all the parts so make sure you familiarize yourself with what you've got first step is to get the body prepared for primer so we're going to lightly rescribe the panel lines not that I necessarily need doing, but you can often get a bit of crud in there, um, some residue left over from the casting process. So I just run over it with my Holly Scriber to clear all the panel lines out and make sure they're nice and free of debris. Um, so it's just a light scribe through, nothing too drastic, fairly easy. Preparing the body for a primer, we're going to scuff the body or key it with some 3000 Tamiya sponge sander. Um, this will put loads of micro abrasions in the surface and allow our primer to grip the very smooth resin body with ease. So it's a case of just running all the way around the body with the sander until you get a nice matte finish. This will also get rid of any other imperfections that may be cast in the body. But to be fair, these bodies are pretty clean. We've mounted it up on my painted wooden holder with some 3M pads and then a quick wipe over with the ProScale Paints pre-paint degreaser We'll remove any fingerprints or nasties left behind by us when we've been handling the model. We're in the spray booth. We've got our Tamiya anti-static brush uh, that gets rid of any dust off the model. And then we've got my Iwata CR3 Revolution at about 18 PSI and some ProScale Paints Grey Primer. So we're going to put a couple of coats of this down, probably two or three uh, light coats of a slightly heavier one at the end. We're never going to apply it wet. Um, and we are concentrating on getting coverage and all the nooks and crannies rather than getting the whole model plastered in primer. So pay attention to um, the wheel arches around the windows, around any vents, any grills, and just get your primer in there and build your coats up slowly. You're much better off doing multiple thin coats than one big thick coat. It will look much better in the end and you'll end up with a far superior finish. So our primer is a microfiller primer, so it will need sanding at the end. But being microfiller, um, it will fill slight imperfections to the body. But like I say, these resin bodies are very, very well cast, so you very rarely get any surface imperfections. And as you can see, after two, three coats, we've got nice coverage there and a nice grey primer base ready for our base colour. So we'll let this dry for four hours maybe. Four to six hours should be adequate. Depends on the temperature uh, of where you're spraying. My cave is pretty, um, it stays around 20, 22 degrees for most of the year. Getting a bit warmer, a little bit cooler in the winter. But it's pretty well insulated and it does stay at a steady temp. So I just leave these to dry, air dry for six hours and we're ready to flat back and crack on with paint. Technically, once the paint is flashed off, which should only take 10, 15 minutes, it is ready for paint, but I tend to paint the primer, leave the room, let everything flash off and off gas, and then come back later. And obviously, because we've got our mirrors to paint as well, uh, with every step along the way, we paint the mirrors with the body, so we get the same even coverage of paint. 
So the color on this is Pro Scale Paints Porsche Venturing Green Metallic. Absolutely beautiful color. We're going to throw our CL3 Revolution airbrush again at about 18 PSI, and we're going to put several coats on. So I think we probably put seven or eight light coats on this in the end. Uh, we're going to alternate between coats from left and right to up and down passes, and we're going to leave five, 10 minutes in between each coat for it to flash off. And again, thin coats are the key here. We don't want to be hosing the paint on. There's no benefit for doing it. You won't get a glossy finish. This isn't how this paint is designed to work. The gloss comes from the clear coat. And again, we're concentrating on more getting the coverage and all the nooks and crannies, wheel arches, uh, around the windows, around the grills, around all the ducts and what have you, rather than hosing the paint on. Like I say, with multiple coats, your paint color will build up slowly and you'll end up with a far superior paint finish than as if you'd hosed it on. So yes, take your time here and just build your paint up nice and slow. So just get your coats on, build it up. So our paints are over thinned. They are thinned more for um, perfection in painting rather than profit. So you will get good coverage off our paints, but thin coats are the way to go. Uh, you will see this color come alive as you paint each and every coat. And like I say, leave that five minutes in between each coat to let it flash off. And also make sure you paint any other parts there are body colored at exactly the same time with the same number of coats. So we're probably about four coats in here and you can see the color start to get some depth. It's a very strange color, this green. Uh, it looks green in some lights and it goes a silvery gray in others. It is definitely a little bit of an odd one. Um, but I'm glad I chose it for this car. As soon as I seen the color, I thought that's the one. It always has to be something different for me uh, just to catch my eye. And here we go, after our, I think this is about eight coats in, uh, we've got that full, beautiful metallic green. We've hardly used any paint at all out of the bottle, probably not even used a quarter of the bottle. And we've got a beautiful paint finish. Absolutely perfect. Just giving our last coat of paint over the roof. As you can see, I'm not hosing the paint on. It is nice, light, thin coats. And the paint color just looks absolutely fantastic. It really does look brilliant. So once we get this 2K, it'll come alive. But even as is, it's, it's a nice color as is. If you left it like this, I think it'd still look pretty. But for me, I like them glossed. I am one of those people. I do like them as a nice high shine. I've done one satin coat car before, and it looked good. But I do much prefer the nice high shine look of modern cars. So there we go. Looking good. And then obviously, make sure you paint your wing mirrors at the same time too. So we leave that overnight, let it all off gas. We're here the next day with our 2K clear. This is the Pro Scale Paints 2K clear system. It's two parts clear to one part activator. So we've got six mil, say, of clear in there. So we add three mil of activator, as we're doing here. Use a fresh pipette for each liquid that you use. Don't contaminate other bottles with the pipette you just used. Throw them away. Um, so yes, six mil of clear, three mil of activator, and you need 5% of thinner of the combined activator clear mix. So that's nine mil. 10% of that would be 0 0.9 mil. So 5% is 0 0.45. So we're gonna put in half a milliliter of thinner. It sounds really complicated. It's not, it's really easy. It takes mere seconds to mix. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, once you've done this a couple of times, it becomes no different than mixing any paint it's really simple to do i have the black tile on the bench so i can see the increments on the medicine cup for the measurements and there we go i also like to strain my 2k uh, by the nature of the activator if you're getting it on the edge of the lid it does dry a bit crusty because that's what the activator does it dries when exposed to air um, so i do like to strain it to get any nasties out of there we do sell the strainers over on pro scale as well the all-important anti-static brush as well so we're going to apply a semi-wet coat for our very first coat uh, i'm using my iwater revolution 0.5 i'm at about 22 psi and like i say on our first coat we're going to go over semi-wet i've sped this footage up because it can take quite a while to show otherwise um but semi wet coat we'll let this flash off for five minutes then we come back with a full wet coat now 
Although we say it's a two code system, it doesn't necessarily have to be. What you want to see when you're finished here is a glass like smooth finish. Now R2K is very, very forgiving on how much you can put down and it still dries ultra thin at the end. So you can really push this quite far. So what I tend to do is my first coat, semi-wet coat, pop it in the box I've got to the left and then paint my mirrors at the same time. Let that flash off for five minutes and we'll quickly spray our next wet coat. So we've got a little bit heavier with the 2K to get a full wet coat again. If we don't get the full coverage, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we can come back with another coat in a minute. So with our second coat down, we'll let the body flash off for 90 seconds or so. We'll just let the 2K self level a little bit. Have another look, if we can see any orange peel or imperfections, we'll give it another light coat. Like I say, just keep going until you get that nice glass-like finish. Um, so on this one, I put three down, popped it back in the plastic box, and then just need to touch up a few bits. So each and every 2K job will vary. None of them will ever be the same. And it's a case of just going around until you're happy with the finish. The one thing I will say is you can push 2K a lot further than you think you can, especially ours. And how this looks when you're finished 2K in is how it's going to dry. So if it's got orange peel in it, it's going to have orange peel in it when it dries. So there we go, after a final look around and a few little extra sprays of 2K, I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, I angle it towards the light so I can see any imperfections. And if I see anything I'm not keen on, I just give another little light uh, spray over with the 2K. Light is your friend here, it will show all the imperfections. And here we go, after letting it settle for a little bit longer. There we go, perfect, absolutely beautiful. 2k now obviously don't forget to follow the safety precautions of 2k have a respirator a very good respirator a good spray booth and make sure all your skin is covered while painting as well so while that body is left in its clear uh, box to cure uh, we can work on the rest of the parts so there's a lot of resin parts to clean up so have your instructions have a real life reference to the car so you can see how things go together and fit and using your whatever sanders or your choice are, man of the UMP sanders, you can go around and clean all the resin up. I use a combination of the thinny sticks and the sponges to clean the resin up. And I like to do all this in one go. So I do all the cleanup in one go, all the priming and all the painting in one go. And it's a very efficient way of working on models, which I've now carried over to my plastic models as well. We've got all the parts mounted there ready for primer and I'm also going to cut off and mount all the photo, oh it's me, hello, I'm also going to cut off and mount all the photo edge parts on some reverse mounted Tamiya tape as you can see here. So the first step of the PE is to prime it, we're using ProScale's photo etch primer. So this is an etch primer specially formulated for photo etch. So a couple of like passes of that would get us a nice etched 
primer surface which makes it a lot more durable to handle in same on the window wipers as well um, these are the bane of my life these things uh, don't mind building them as much anymore attaching them to the body it's an absolute nightmare they are a pain in the butt they really are so like i say just a couple of light coats of the etch primer and then the window surrounds as well which spoiler alert we don't use in the end because they're too thick and they stick out from the side of the car so we're going to paint them up but we won't actually use them in the build in the end so like i say the etch primer works absolutely fantastic we threw my water hpc plus here at about 18 psi and there's a lot of photo etching these kits so hence why it's all batch painted together and you could paint it on the fret if you wanted but you're still going to cut it off clean it up and then touch up the edges so i find it much easier to cut it all off clean it up mount it to the reverse mounted tamiya tape and spray it all in one go with the rest of the resin we're going to prime this in mr service of 1500 black so this is my preferred choice for any parts that can't be sanded because you can't really get in there on the wheels we're making sure we're getting in amongst all the spokes and around the back on the rest of the body we're just getting nice even coats probably two light coats in total over everything uh, to get nice even coverage so on the interior on this i've chose a gray interior we're going to get two brand new pro scale paint colors today we're going to get a stainless steel for the wheels and a leather color gray leather color for the interior brake calipers these are going to be red so we're priming these in pink this is pink tamiya primer our discs we are painting in pro scale paint carbon ceramic paint so a couple of coats of that gives a really nice effect on the discs as well so just build it up slow again you don't want to be hosing it on nice thin coat is the key um, our carbon effect paint looks absolutely fabulous i do love this and uh, i'm in the habit now even though a car doesn't necessarily have carbon paint of using it just because i love the look of it i think this car probably had an option but i think as standard there were steel discs but I've opted to go for the carbon option. Now, like I say, new wheel color. This is stainless steel. Um, so a completely different color to our bright aluminium. I think it looks absolutely fantastic when done. I did contemplate clear coating it, but decided against it at the end because I thought in its natural sheen, it looked really good. So like I say, a couple of coats of this. Getting all around in and out the spokes, around the edge of the rim over, and underneath and inside the wheel as well. With the window surrounds, we're going to paint these in Mr. Hobby GX2 gloss black. Like I say, we're not going to use them, but at this stage, we don't know that. And the calipers we're painting in Pro Scale Paints Brembo red. So a couple of coats of the red covers really quick over the pink primer, which is why we use pink primer as a primer for red. So there we go. Absolutely fantastic. And on the interior, we've got the brand new Pro Scale Paints medium gray leather interior. So I picked this because I saw a car with it. A Porsche with it I think it complements the green metallic color on the exterior well and it's kind of a signature color for German cars and Porsche in general so I thought it was a good color for it so let's give it a whirl the, the joys of having a paint mixing system at your fingertips I can make any paint literally there and then it's very helpful there's lots of interior parts to paint and we are going to break some of this up uh, so it's not just a sea of gray with some black and some trim and what have you uh, it's got these beautiful iconic Porsche seats. Could those seats be any more Porsche? I don't think so. Um, so these are all painted up as well, as well as the dashboard. So we're going to mask the dashboard up and put a bit of black on it. The seats are going to get some black trim on it, as will the center console as well, just to break up that sea of grey. Now the interior uh, floor pan, we're going to um, we're going to paint up with the grey. But we are going to flock the carpet and the rear partial shelf eventually. Um, there we go. So the wheels with them being painted and left to just chill for a bit and flash off. We've got the Porsche emblems to go in the middle. So they're placed in the usual decal method and then some ultimate strong solution. They are set in place. The ultimate strong solution is unbeatable as a decal solution in my opinion. Building up our discs, we've got our photo edge. Now, there's a lot of parts of these. It's quite confusing. So test for everything before you commit to glue. We've got a couple of dabs of Bob Smiths on each disc. And as you can see, we do have a unpainted section of the disc where um, our pore stub has been. But we'll put our caliper over that in a minute to cover it. So 
you've got to refer to instructions to figure out which hub goes where. Once you've done that, you can start to assemble things. And like I say, where we've got that unpainted section, that's where our caliper will sit. So yeah, work smarter, not harder. So just make sure you're confident you've got all the parts in the right place. And then you can start to assemble it. Double check everything. If you get any glue where you shouldn't, get a cotton bud and wipe it out like so. And I will recommend using the wheels to double check the fitments of the hubs as central. Now, we masked up the dashboard. You can see it in the background. I did contemplate masking up the seats, but they had a really good demarcation on them. And I thought it's not worth the God knows how long of masking up when I can brush paint it in minutes. So some Vallejo model color black, thinned with a drop of water. We can brush paint these really easy. And A, you're not really going to see them at all. And B, well, does it really matter if it's not perfectly masked? Um, I can brush paint perfectly accurate, and it looked perfectly adequate once it was done. Um, it all depends what you want to get out of it. For me, for something that you won't really see through the back window of the car, and something only you guys will really see, it's just sometimes not worth the the pain and effort of masking things when you can easily brush paint it. Dashboard's got some nice decals. We've painted up our black trim in the center. There's some carbon effect trim that goes either side on the console as well. And lots of little decals. We've got the speedo, rev counter, the uh, display in the center, some buttons. We've got the Porsche logo in the center of the steering wheel as well. And then there's my carpet flock by my wonderful assistant Hannah with the ProScale Paint Carpet. I will do a guide on doing this soon. We've got some speaker grills to pop in place. As you can see, we haven't done the partial shelf. Completely forgot about that. That will be done later on. But we're just assembling all the photo etch on the interior for now. Right, so the 2K has now cured and we're going to flat this all back. So we've got our 3M Trizip pads. Now, because I've got such a nice 2K job out of the gun, we don't need to go right back with 3,000. So we're going to use a 6 and the 8,000 here to flat it back. So this is going to do two things. Number one, it'll thin the 2K out a little bit. So it'll make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, more importantly, it'll get rid of any surface flaws in the 2K itself. So if you've got any dust or hair or what have you, it will take care of those. And once we've done the 6, we'll move on to the 8 and work our way through the grits. Wiping off in between with some clean kitchen paper. The water there I have is just clean tap water with a few drops of dish soap in there, Dawn or Fairy, wherever you call it, where you're from. Um, I'm just going to go around with both grits of sander until we've got a nice, flat, even surface. Once we've got that, we're going to get the UMP polish system. This is the compound, which is a much coarser polish. And we're going to give it a nice polish up all over. We've got some old T-shirt material here which is the perfect polishing cloth, in my opinion. Um, being careful, as we should be with the sanding discs as well, is be careful of any edges or any raised areas where the paint is thinner, and just be very careful and take your time. Once we're done with the compound, we can hit it with the polish as well, and then with a nice clean cloth, we can buff it all up to a nice high shine. So the combination here, it's a winning combination, the Pro Scale Clear, the Trizip Pads and UMP Polish System, it just gives you an absolutely beautiful clear coat. It really does. Does This is the polish. This is a much less aggressive abrasive. And it's the final step in this. And like I say, once you've done it all, get a nice clean bit of um, T-shirt material and wipe over all the body. Now, as with all these videos, this is a condensed video. If you want to see this in much more depth, there's a full three-part video build series on my Patreon. Uh, there's other perks becoming a patron. You get early access on the videos, access to all the full video builds. Um, you get access to a patron exclusive chat, a Friday uh, bench update every week for patrons only. And coming up, there will be patron um, live streams as well, patron exclusive live streams. So if you want to become a patron, there's links down below. And with your support, it's what keeps these videos going. So the residue of the polish does collect in the panel line. So we use an airbrush with some water in to blast this out. And a quick jet wash sorts that out. Dry everything off. Make sure it's all dry. I'm going to go mask off our windows and our front grill for all the black trim that needs painting. That has been sprayed with Mr. Service of 1500 Black again. And what took ages to mask takes mere seconds 
to unmask and there we go job done the windows look great and then we brush painted the interior in black and all the wheel arches in model color black again as well now sadly some fit issues with this kit and this is where the kit starts to let itself down the door cards don't fit in for a start so i had to notch each one of them to get them to fit really annoying and frustrating to spend 150 pounds on a kit which i did buy this one myself um to have parts not fit it is disappointing um it's just one of those things unfortunately from time to time so a little bit of trial and error gets the interior to fit then we can start gluing our uh, seats in place so use the instructions as a very rough guide they're not an instruction sheet they're a vague assembly guide um yes my advice would be on these kits is to test fit everything don't commit to glue until you test fitted every single part because i've been there and done it and I had to literally break parts apart to get them fixed so using normal ca glue we're gluing our seats in place we've got the backs in place there those iconic pour sheets which look absolutely fantastic there we go and then our center console in place as well there we go and then with our dashboard in place our door cards slotted in we can push our tub in and then we're going to pop a little bit of glue in the side of the door card so just smudge them over with a cocktail stick and very carefully applied some glue down the sides job done then we glued the bottom in as you can see here now the screw holes normally always need widening on these so a battery powered drill is the ideal tool just be careful you don't go right through the body just really take your time with this and then the screws that come supplied with the kit not the best way of attaching the chassis but it does work it's a bit rustic shall we say but it does work in getting everything in place There we go, with all those screwed in, that's the chassis in place. If you feel any resistance, stop screwing, uh, take it out and redrill the hole. Now with the hubs, please pay attention to instructions, make sure you get the right ones orientated the correct way. The discs, calipers do usually go in a usual um, normal pattern. So just follow the instructions until you're happy you've got everything lined up correctly. Then apply a liberal amount of glue on the back and get them in place. The headlights are another disappointing part on this. The actual headlight buckets fitted in just fine, as did the actual light pieces themselves. But the clear resin was really poor quality on the exterior. Uh, very cloudy and kind of mis uh, miscast and didn't really fit properly either. Somebody did warn me on this before I started the build. And yes, yeah, sadly, not the best part. With the rear clear parts, we're gonna spray these in Tamiya X27 Clear Red. So we spray neat out the bottle, and then final coat is done with a thin coat. And then all the lights are glued in place with Bob Smith's um, odorless CA glue. I did have to heat up that rear light lens uh, to get it to fit in the larger piece. It was a bit, bent out of shape uh heated up my gun and molded it properly i show that on my patreon full build um but once it's in the right shape we can dab a bead of bob smith's in there to glue it in place the bob smith's glue is odorless so it doesn't fog plastic so it doesn't fog clear parts either um so it's ideal for use on clear parts lights etc uh it does take a little bit longer to grab so you may find you need to hold things just that little bit longer before they get grip there's a porsche embossed uh, panel for the back as well that we've already test fitted all these parts so we know they fit perfect i just slot in with a bit of glue and then the porsche logo for the bonnet as well just a metallic decal so the metallic decals, I don't tend to hit with decal solutions. I just put them in place and burnish them down. These rear lights, these are clear acetate I've painted red. These were a pain as well. This is the real downfall of the kit, is these clear parts. They are not very good at all. But we work with what we've got, and we do the best job we can. We do get turned exhausts uh, with this. The tips are in place there in the rear avalanche. You can see them. 
they were very nice and these wheels are absolutely beautiful and again before you commit to glue make sure you get the right wheels in the right place because two fit on all four just fine and two of them don't fit the back at all so make sure you get the right wheels before you commit to any ca glue right with all four wheels in place we can concentrate on our windows and again i've shown this many many times before uh, we use the bob smith's odorless ca glue it is by far the best glue for doing this job it's uh it's fairly mess free it doesn't fog the glass up and it works great so using a cocktail stick we're going to apply dabs strategically in the window surround if you get a big pool of ca glue drag it across rather than leaving a big pool of it otherwise it'll splurge out onto the glass i make a little handle out of some um doubles not double sided out of tamia masking tape as you can see here do not touch the back of the glass otherwise you'll get a fingerprint on it uh, there is a clear acetate film or a clear film on the acetate on the exterior so if you get any glue and what have you on that it's not the end of the world and then pop it in place i did have to trim this window as well again i do show that my full build on patreon it was a little bit too big on the rear and then it's a case of holding as many corners as possible we become an octopus here as you can see i'm going to very cleverly hold three positions at once with one finger look at that for skill and then we use another pointed cotton bud to burnish down the edges of all the glass until the ca glue grabs a hold of it so it can take a while to do but just persevere just take your time and work on each window exactly the same wing mirrors a little dab of bob smith's in the side and they are glued in place nice and simple and easy we have the metal decals in there as well and the most satisfying part of these kits is peeling off that clear plastic on the windows the window wipers we painted earlier they're glued in place with ca glue uh, i've tried all different ca glues odorless yada 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 pva uv glue just normal ca glue you just gotta be confident and get it in place the first time uh, once you get it this for me is one of the worst points of this kit or any of these kits the window wipers are a pain i hate them and uh, there we go all done all we need to do is give it a final polish up so we've got some ump spray shine here which is like a spray wax um, we're spraying some onto my nice clean glasses cleaning cloth i get these off amazon and uh, it's what i use for my final polish now this isn't abrasive at all this just needs to be put on left to dry haze up and then buffed off and this will give us a nice high shine gloss so once it's hazed up you can use it on the clear parts as well should you wish just be careful you don't snag the window wipers the windows the door mirrors etc and we can buffer up to a nice high shine and there we go she's all done very happy with this one this color is awesome it looks absolutely beautiful very happy with the paint job she's not perfect nor my work ever is uh, the kit is let down a little bit by some silly issues here and there but i'm very happy with this color and it's a very strange color it changes light from green to a metallic gray silver color depending on the light and happy with all the different colors we've used i think they contrast well against each other and yeah even though we have problems with the build i still think it's come out okay so i've got best picture pictures over here in my photo booth and you can see the true color so this was primed in ProScale Grey Primer, painted several coats of Porsche, a Venturian Green from ProScale. We gave it a black Tamiya Panoline wash. Uh, ProScale Paints 2K cleared. That was flatted back after about a week with the Trizic 6 and 8,000 pads and polished up with the UMP polish system. Um, the interior we did in medium grey leather with some black trim. Um, we used grey uh, ProScale flocking for the carpet. And I think that grey leather on the green paint is a very good contrasting color i don't think it's too in your face i think it looks perfect um on the wheels we use the new pro scale paint stainless steel color which again i think looks absolutely fantastic carbon ceramic paint from pro scale on the discs and brembo red from pro scale on the calipers and again i think the red adds a nice touch of color to the kit as well all the black trim on the exterior is mr surface of 1500 black um and that's about it so like i said there were a few issues the interior fit was a bit poor in places the light fit wasn't the best in places either those front headlight lenses were terrible they were not good at all and the front lights weren't good either i actually replaced those with glue and glaze um instead of the clear lenses so 
Yes, it's a real shame this one to spend that amount of money and have a flawed kit, but it's just, you got to take the rough with the smooth. Most of these Alpha Model kits are brilliant. This was still a good build, and it's a beautiful looking car, uh, but it does have its problems. So just be aware if you've got the kit, or if you're thinking of buying it, uh, just be aware of those issues. But I'm really happy how this one turned out. Uh, it's another build off the bench, and there we go. Let's go back to me for some final thoughts. So there we go, all done. And very happy with the result of that one. I think it turned out really well. The kit is flawed, the headlights, the door cards not fitting, all the smaller exterior lights not fitting. It's a real problem with a kit that costs this much money. It's just one of those things. What can you do? You just gotta take the rough with the smooth and roll with it. And we did on this. We got it finished, and I think it turned out all right. Really happy with the colour on this one. It's a beautiful colour, and I think the grey interior colour really contrasts well. With the beautiful steel wheels, red calipers, carbon discs. Um, I think it works really well. The beautiful winning combination of 2K clear from Pro Scale, the 3M Trizip pads, and the UMP polish system just gives an unbeatable shine on the bodywork. And yeah, really happy with this one. Although the kit's flawed, I think it turned out quite well. So there we go, that's it. Another build off the bench. If you want to access the full video build of this, it's full three part 30 minute videos over on my Patreon. The link's down below, click on it. There's other perks, get early access to all the videos, a Patreon exclusive weekly bench update. Um, you get to vote on things. You can uh, be added to the exclusive Facebook Messenger group, the fa exclusive Facebook group. They're going to do the Discord or a forum as well for those that aren't on Facebook. And there will also be a weekly uh, Patreon uh, live stream coming up in the future as well. So you can get access to all that by becoming a patron down below. And you also keep me doing these videos. Without your support, I couldn't do this. So it is very important for me to pimp the patronage. I know you probably get sick of hearing it, but it's just one of those things. There's other links down there. You've got Pro Scale Paint, UMP Retail. There's links to all my social media of ISM. Uh, you got links to my uh, Etsy store where I saw my built models. You got links to my Amazon store and all the list of all the products I use in my videos. There's links to my scale weight. You can look at my stash. There's an email address to get in touch with me should you wish as well. Anything and anything can be found in that description down below if you want to have a look. And of course, if you're not sub to the channel, sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up or down, whatever you want to do. Uh, make sure you click that bell notification to get notified of all Lisa's videos. Most importantly of all, if you've liked the video, leave me a comment down below. I do read and eventually respond to everybody. Uh, let me know what you think of the video. And uh, we'll be back in the next video build, which is that, the new Mustang Boss 351 from Revel. There's a review of that coming out soon as well. And there's loads of other videos coming out over the next month or so. Um, there we go. So thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed that build as much as I did building it. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Also, thank you to all my current patrons as well, whose names are on screen right now. Thank you, guys and girls. You are all absolute legends. Um, yes, there we are. Enjoy the rest of everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.